Hi, my name is Austin Lent, and I am here with MCAT Mastery to talk about how I built persistence and stamina while studying for the MCAT. So I began my MCAT journey a little nervous, a little excited, and very naive. I thought that since I had done well in the courses and I would immediately get the score that I wanted, I soon learned this was not the case at all. And from the get-go, when I realized how much material is actually on the MCAT, recognizing how many details I don't really know, to then taking practice exams and reaching plateaus and not fully getting the score that I wanted to, I felt discouraged and I lost motivation. Chances are you probably have felt like that too. Those feelings are 100% totally valid. Those are normal to have. For a seven and a half hour exam, you are going to feel discouraged and lose motivation. And in fact, that was kind of part of the MCAT purpose is to really test your stamina and your persistence. And so with the realization that it's okay to feel these emotions, it then became clear to me that the more important part was how am I going to respond to this? How am I going to bounce back? And for me, one of those, especially for contact review, was the Pomodoro technique. The Pomodoro technique is a method in which you work for long periods and then you get a short break and you kind of repeat these cycles over and over again. And so traditionally it's about 20 to 25 minutes of work, then you get a five minute break and then you write repeat that two or three more times. And then after that, you'll get a longer break of 15, 20, 25 minutes. And for me, this was really effective because I had a set amount of time that I was going to be working. I only needed to work for 25 minutes so I could break up my task into something smaller. So instead of saying, I need to do this entire chapter by the end of the hour, two hours, I would say, okay, I need to finish this subsection in 20 minutes. And to me, that was not only more manageable, but it also allowed me to stay focused because it was a smaller task in a smaller defined time. And it also helped me remove distractions because if I'm just kind of reading without purpose, I might pick up my phone and scroll through Instagram or start texting my friends or whatever. But when I needed to only have 25 minutes, that was my period of working. I knew that like to me, it was almost embarrassing. Like I can't put my phone down for 25 minutes. And so that helped me shut out some of those distractions and stay focused on my work. And so this might be something that works for you. And I would encourage you to try it if you're having trouble staying focused and getting tasks done in a good amount of time, but maybe it doesn't work. And that's also okay and important for you to understand. The next important thing that I realized is that it was very important for me to be honest with myself throughout the MCAT studying process, which is a very difficult thing to do because it is a bit of an ego hit to admit that maybe I don't know this topic as well as I should or maybe I didn't really understand this passage and I just kind of was answering the questions. While this is you know, difficult to do, it is very important because that's the only way you are going to see growth when you hit plateaus or when you feel discouraged because something needs to change if you're not seeing improvement that you want to. And if you kind of keep doing the same thing over and over again, chances are you are gonna see the same results. And so when you are honest with yourself and you are able to reflect on what you actually know, why you got something wrong, that is very powerful and it allows you to identify areas that you need to improve on. And that is where for me, I was able to kind of get that last growth when I hit a plateau a month before my MCAT and I wanted to improve my score further. Another thing that a lot of students neglect when they're studying for the MCAT is making sure they have time to do things that they like and at least, you know, once every single day at the minimum, whether it's some kind of stress reliever like exercise or meditation or socializing with family and friends. These are all important and essential needs as humans that we have. And so I know it's really easy to kind of get in the mindset that, you know, I only have a certain amount of time and I have all these other obligations, whether it's work or school, but at the same time, it's just as important that you focus on your own mental health because the worst thing that could happen is that you get burnt out because then you're not gonna see the progress you want. You're gonna get really frustrated. You're not gonna be able to study effectively. And one way to prevent burnout 
is making sure that you are able to do things that make you happy. And this is obviously beneficial for a number of reasons, but one of the most important is that it really allows you to clear your mindset of everything related to the MCAT, take out, off your mind, off these stressors, and just be able to focus and be in the moment, which is something that when you're studying for the MCAT, you don't get a lot. The last and maybe most important thing I realized throughout my MCAT journey was understanding that the MCAT is not a measurement of how smart someone is, how successful they are or how successful they will be. It is not a reflection of anything about you as a person or a student. And for me, that I think was necessary understanding because I kind of got in the trap of saying, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'll never be able to study enough to learn all this information. And just by realizing that this test has nothing to do with me as a person, I could separate all of those negative thoughts and focus on what the MCAT really is. So um, I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about my MCAT journey. The most important thing in this area for me was flexibility. Because if I look up on Google and I see on Reddit or SDN something about stamina and persistent strategies, there are hundreds and thousands of people who will say, this is what worked for me. And another person might say, this is what worked for them. It's definitely important to try those, but keep in mind that you need to find the strategies that work best for you and for your scenario. If you are interested in using the Pomodoro technique that I mentioned before, uh, you can just Google Pomodoro technique and there are a bunch of different websites that will explain how it works and they have their own timers on there so you don't have to worry about any of the time management aspect, which is why I really like uh, some of those websites. If you want to hear more from me and my fellow mentors at MCAT Mastery, you can check the link below to learn how to get involved with us. Thank you for uh, listening to me and taking the time to watch this video.